now i'll explain about human ears now human ear can be divided into external ear then this is middle ear and then this is internal ear now first i'll explain about external ear external ear consists of pinna this is the ear pinna now ear pinna it is a characteristic features of mammals even though not the unique feature it is also one of the characteristic features of mammals now purpose of ear pinna is to carry the sound waves into the ear canal so it will help in collecting the sound waves and that collected sound waves will now reach into ear canal the next part of the ear the there are some animals that can move the ear pinna however human pinna cannot be moved uh, with the exception of atavism otherwise those animals that can move their ear pinna they can they are better in collecting the sound waves than the static pinna now the sound waves collected by ear pinna will reach into the next part of the external ear this one this is called as ear canal it is also called auditory meatus now inside this ear canal there are certain glands called as cerumenous glands that produce ear wax the ear wax is also called cerumen now another main function of this ear canal is whatever waves that are collected by the pinna they will carry those waves towards this membrane called tympanic membrane or ear drum now the next part will be the middle ear now before that i'll explain about tympanic membrane or the ear drum ear drum is a thin membrane and outside it is similar to skin but inside it is the mucus membrane and at the center of ear drum the region is called ampo to which malleus is attached now ear drum is very important to carry the sound vibrations to the middle ear now explaining the middle ear part now this one this is the middle ear which is filled with air so basically middle ear is air filled part of the ear now middle ear has a long tube here this tube this tube it is called as eustachian tube now eustachian tube will finally open into throat region that is specifically in the pharynx it will open now what is the function of eustachian tube is it will equalize the pressure on either side of ear drum and that is the function of eustachian tube now other other structures that are present in middle ear is the three ear ossicles that means small sized bones this is malleus incus and stapes now when the sound waves are collected by pinna and when it reaches to auditory meatus and it will hit the tympanic membrane and vibration in tympanic membrane causes vibration of malleus and vibration of malleus causes vibration of incus and vibration of incus causes vibration of stirrup that is stapes so it means that the vibration continue to get passed from external ear middle ear to internal ear now what is the importance of these three bones is these three bones increase the efficiency of sound waves by 20 times it means they increase the amplitude of sound waves without affecting its frequency so this was 
uh, explanation regarding the middle ear and now comes internal ear now internal ear this portion is called has the internal ear in the internal ear further it is a fluid filled it is not of it is does not consist of air uh, it's not air filled but rather it is a fluid filled internal ear now internal ear can be further divided into two parts one is called the vestibular apparatus this much portion is called as the vestibular apparatus and the other is called as cochlea now what is the broad function of pass vestibular apparatus and cochlea vestibular apparatus has a very broad function that is balancing of balancing or sense of equilibrium comes due to vestibular apparatus whereas sense of hearing that is hearing function is the function of cochlea now what is the internal ear in general called the internal ear together can be called labyrinth and it has two labyrinth one is bony labyrinth and another is membranous labyrinth now what is this bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth now consider there is a bone part here this is a bone of course you know which bone is very near to the ear is the temporal bone this is the bone part and very inner to the bone part will be another part that is membrane part with some gap and now you can see the fluid which is there here between the bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth which i'm putting in a form of a dot here that fluid is called as perilum where has the fluid that is present inside the membrane the fluid here this is called as endolem now inter internal ear has both wherever whichever part it might be the cochlea or the semicircular canals it should have outer bony labyrinth inner membranous labyrinth and uh, membranous labyrinth endolymph will flow and bony labyrinth between uh, membranous labyrinth and bony labyrinth perilymph will be there i mean uh, there is a presence of peri lymph so this completes regarding the concept called labyrinth then again i'll come back to the vestibular apparatus now vestibular apparatus this one vestibular apparatus it has three semicircular canals which are right angles to each other and base of semicircular canal is solen and is called as ampulla inside this solen portion there is a sensory ridge and the name of that sensory ridge is cresta ampullaris and it is responsible for sense of balance as i already told that um, it is responsible for sense of balance and second structure that is present in vestibular apparatus is utricle and then secule utricle and secule together can be called otolith organs because they contain otolith now what is otolith is sensory patch or you can tell sensory ridge or sensory portion of utricle and secule is called as macula which can be called as otolith otolith usually consists of a gelatinous matrix hair cell and calcium carbonate now this completes the entire structure vestibular apparatus that is semicircular canal utricle and secule now this entire so vestibular apparatus is responsible for both the dynamic as well as static equilibrium it is responsible for sense of rotational acceleration horizontal acceleration as well as vertical acceleration balance during vertical axis so you can tell that general sense of equilibrium or balance comes due to this vestibular apparatus now this one let me tell uh, this is a part of the ear that is main part of the ear that is responsible for hearing within this cochlea there is an organ of cortic due to which the actual hearing occurs 
the here cochlea also the coiling is around the coiling of the cochlea 